called your game Wednesday night uh, against the Clippers. You had just an insane fourth quarter. And I was talking about, as it relates to you, competitive stamina, mm -hmm. which is simply the ability to do something at a high level and then get up the next day and do it again. And for you, that's happened season after season, year after year. I think the best players have a level of competitive stamina. And it's one of three qualities for mm -hmm. me that make a great basketball player. Because your quote after the game, it was, I know I was born with some gifts and athletic abilities, but that only gets you so far. For sure. What are the qualities for you that make a great basketball player beyond just talent and skill set and size? Um, knowing the history of the game. Knowing the history of the game, knowing the ones that came before you, knowing the ones that paved the way, knowing the reason why you're actually having the ability to actually live out your dream. That doesn't happen without the people that came before you. It doesn't happen without Bill Russell, you know, going through what he went through during the civil rights movement and all those things, Oscar Robinson going on with what he had to deal with, you know, during those times. It does not happen if they're able to just be pure in who they are that allows us to now perform and do it with no care. Um, also, I think discipline at people, you know what, people use that word so loosely. What does it mean to you? You have to have the ability, when, you, when it comes to discipline, it's like you have to sacrifice loved ones. <laughs> you have to sacrifice loved ones for a long period of time if you want to be great. It is very unfortunate, and you feel it at times. You, you know, you know the saying: if if if, the, if if it's too hot, get the hell out of the kitchen. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta get out of the kitchen because it gets hot. But you have to have a discipline to sometimes you have to sacrifice loved ones in order to be great because they don't understand. And, and that's okay. They don't understand what it means to, like, I am getting up every single day at 5 or 6 a.m. And when I get home after everyone leaves the gym, I'm going to take a nap. So now you're sacrificing your loved ones because you're not spending time with them. And when I wake up, I'm probably going to train again. And then I'm going to have dinner. And then I'm going to bed. And I'm going to do that every single day for a long period of time. Yeah. That's sacrificing and discipline. You know, and for me, I was 18 when I came into the league. So I got my best friends from high school that's now in college. I got one that's at Ohio State. I got two that's at the University of Akron. I have another one that's at a school in West Virginia, uh, Fairmount State. And they're calling me, telling me, uh, hey, bro, you got, yo, you got to come down to the, you got to come down to these parties. You're not going to college. You're never going to be in college. You got, and I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I look back on it now, I wish I would have done a few of them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I wish I did. Um, but then the third thing, JJ, asked, do you really love the game? Like, do you really love the game? And I'm not just talking about, like, wins and losses. Do you really love the process of the game and everything that happens before the referee does like this? That's the easy part. You know this. You know this. You was one of the first ones in the gym, one of the last ones to leave. Everyone sees when the cameras are rolling and the 20,000 fans are there and the cheerleaders are dancing and the popcorn is popping and the celebrities are sitting in celebrity row. But like, who has the love for the game when nobody is there? You know? I love all of that. 